How would you estimate the size of the paint market in the US? Hey everyone, welcome back to another Exponent product management mock interview. We're gonna be doing an estimation question today with Selena. So before we get into it, Selena, do you mind telling the audience a little bit about yourself? Yeah, for sure, and thanks for having me. Um, hey everyone, I'm Selena Shang and I'm a product manager at Google. Uh, I've been there about two years now. And prior to that, I was an APM at Yahoo. Cool. So like I mentioned, we're doing an estimation question. So let's dive into it. How would you estimate the size of the paint market in the US? How would you estimate the size of the paint market in the US? Awesome. Uh, I think my Google Docs is lagging a little bit. All right, here we go. Um, sure, so I'm assuming that this will mean how much people are spending on paint uh, in a given year in the US. Um, and if that's true, uh, there's, you know, just brainstorming out loud, there's a few different channels that, you know, people might be buying paint for. One might be for houses, you know, buildings in general. Um, so residential, industrial, things like that. Um, another one I can think of are vehicles. So like painting your car, painting trucks um, and the likes. Um, and then maybe a last one would be things like, you know, art supplies. Like I'm sure you remember when you're K through 12, you probably had to do some sort of painting project growing up. And, you know, there's also hobbyists that enjoy painting. Um, does that make sense so far? Yeah, that, that's a pretty good spectrum to start with. Cool. So I think like for the purpose of this exercise, um, my, my gut says that I think we should focus on residential buildings, industrial buildings, and vehicles to start because if you think about all the vehicles and all the buildings in the world or in the US, and then you think about how many people in those buildings and vehicles might be painting, I think the scale of all the buildings and things like that would dwarf art supplies. Um, but if we come to the end and feel like the estimate is off, like I think we can revisit that. Um, so at a really high level, <clears throat> if we take some unit of paint, say like a can of paint, um, cans of paint, to find the total market, we'd want to see how many cans of paint are being used per year um, and multiply that out by how much a, pan, a, a can of paint costs in general. And so um, just given that high level equation, again, we have buildings that are residential, buildings that are industrial or more commercial and then like vehicles. So let's break it down a little bit more. So starting with residential, we know that there's about 300 million people in the US and given that there are about three people per household, let's say that there's about 100 million houses um, in the US. And so if we're thinking about how much paint is needed to paint, all the houses in the US, we should also keep in mind that not every single house is going to need paint every single year. And so if you imagine like, you know, over the course of a house's lifetime, um, painting is not really a regular thing. Like you hope that, you know, you do it one, you do it nicely one time and it'll last you like a good amount of time. So let's say for now, like maybe you paint a house every 10 years. So um, if that's true, there are 10 million houses per year that are needing paint. So is your assumption here that for every household, they're going to be in a house? Um, for every household, who's going to be in a house? Every household in the U.S. Um, lives in a house. Is that your assumption? Yeah. And so by house, I should say just like in general, like residential building, it could be apartment, it could be a house. And of course, some houses are bigger than others. Um, you know, if we were to divide this a little more, we could go by geography, city size um, and get a little bit more granular, but yeah, for now let's assume just like it's a residential building. Yeah, that sounds good. Just wanted to clarify. Yeah, thanks for clarifying. All right, um, cool. So let's say like 10 million houses per year need paint. And if I think about like the average size house, like again, some are bigger, some are smaller, you know, generally you need a bathroom, um, say like two bedrooms, a living room and a kitchen, um, say on average for like a small family. And so that's five rooms. And um, based on experience, I think you can basically use one can of paint per you know, reg reasonably sized room. And so if you do one can of paint per room uh, and then also assume that we're painting the outside of the house, um, that would be double. So about 10 cans of paint per house 
Multiplying that out, that's 100 million cans of paint res eventually. And yeah, to your point, let's uh, let's get to the end and then revisit to see if this was granular enough. All right, so if there are no questions there, um, for industrial, I think we can use a similar approach. Um, you know, there's some population in the U.S. and um, and uh, there are, there are a given amount of industrial buildings to service these people. Um, and so I think, unlike a home, um, you know, more commercial buildings aren't turning over for paint jobs every single year because like the construction is a bigger deal. Like when they're built, it's like you know, hopefully built to last a a longer amount of time. So let's assume that uh, it's every actually 20 years. 20 years um, needing paint. And so that translates to 5 million large buildings if we assume the same population. And then, you know, this is just, you know, a rough estimation. I'm thinking like right now I'm picturing sort of like downtown Mountain View where I am, like downtown Livermore. Um, where I grew up and you know they're not skyscrapers but they're like sizable buildings with multiple stories that like have a few restaurants and you know again like we could divide by geographies for like a New York versus like a suburb where I grew up but for now let's assume that it's about um, 10x these buildings are 10x the size of a house and like this again will vary greatly but just to sort of uh, put the thought process down um, all right, so then if we use the same approach, that's gonna be um, the number of residential uh, residential cans of paint. Yeah, let me just bold this so I don't lose it. Um, times 10, which is, so basically a billion cans of paint for industrial buildings already. Um, so then the last bucket we have here are vehicles. And so using a similar approach, um, you know, not everyone has a car. Some people have more than one car. Um, but if we, again, base it on like the number of households and go from there, um, 100 million households. Um, let's say that um, on average, when I say vehicles, like it's going to include trucks and buses and bikes. And so all the modes of transportation that might need painting. Um, and so I'd say it's safe to say like people have one car and like maybe one other vehicle that they take advantage of, whether it's a bus or a bike or something. So let's say like two vehicles in general um, are, are being leveraged per household. And again, this would vary by you know geography and demographic. And so um, when I think about the size of a room versus the size of a car, um, let's say like, you know, one car would take about a can of paint as well, um, because like you're, you have to do like many, many coats. Um, and you know, uh, it's, uh, you want to make sure that the, the quality is pretty good for your, for your car. So one can per vehicle, and then that would come out to be 200 million cans of paint. Okay, cool. So now we have like a rough estimate. Um, of how many cans of paint we would need for vehicles and buildings in general. And so if we add that up to get the total number of uh, paint cans, that's going to be, I'm just going to keep it in millions for now. Oh, and then um, based off of my experience, just going to like uh, Kelly Moore and that sort of, those sorts of stores, um, cans of paint like maybe uh, are about like $20 per can. Oops. So if we multiply that out, um, I'm gonna use some scientific notation to help me with my zeros here. Um, that's gonna be about $26 billion. Um, I'll pause there in case you have questions on how I got here and then I'll sort of uh, give you my thoughts on how we, on what this number means and how I feel about it. Yeah, um, this makes sense broadly. Do you mind sc scrolling up a little bit? So um, I'm looking at the top and it says um, approximately five rooms per house. Is that 10 cans? Is that for covering all five rooms? Yeah, covering all five rooms. So we're assuming um, one can covers the square footage needed for one room. 
but then you know you're also painting like the exterior of the house or so for each room you know there are walls on the outside and the roof and so I, i'm just like approximating like you just double the surface area on the outside for now okay got it yep that makes sense um sure yeah so i'd love to hear if you think this final uh, answer is an overestimate or underestimate or if it's just about right yeah um looking at it i think orders of magnitude it's probably okay like i don't think paint is a hundred billion dollar business like a Google or Facebook might be. Um, I do think maybe it's a factor of two off. I could see um, the size, for example, the size of industrial buildings on average could actually be much higher um, given that in, in major cities, skyscrapers are like much bigger than 10x the size of a house. So I would want to revisit that. Um, and then I think if I were to revisit, um, say, the um, like the uh, the demographics and like you know geographical makeup, um, it might net out to be a little bit higher. And sort of going back to the arts and crafts thing we were talking about earlier, I think it was okay to leave it out of the estimation because when I think about the scale of you know tens of billions, I don't again I don't think the art supply market would you know dwarf this by an order of magnitude. So I think it was okay to leave it out for now. Cool. Yeah, um, totally follow you along. And I think that this is a reasonable answer. Um, I also agree with what you said about maybe the, the skyscrapers might fall under like that 80-20 rule where there's probably only like 20% of industrial buildings are skyscrapers. But those 20% of skyscrapers, maybe they're so big that they're 80% of like how much industrial paint uh, that, that segment is. Um, all, all in all, I, I love your answer. I love how you structured it. I also loved how in the beginning um, you segmented not only uh, houses but you also thought about cars and also arts and supplies as a market so um i think that there's there's always like different ways to go about answering these these types of questions and i think the way you did it makes sense um, i'm wondering if you might have any tips or advice for the audience if they were to uh, come across an estimation question like this yeah definitely i think in general when you're going through an estimation question about revenue it's sort of it's good to have a lay of the land for some other companies and how big their revenue is. So when you get to the end, you're like, okay, great. Like, I'm glad I didn't get 150 billion because that would be as big as, you know, Google. Um, so that's one, uh, that's one tip. And then I think um, the second tip I would give is just upfront, making sure you take your time to consider all the sources and clarify with the interview interviewer that that's what they have in mind too. Because if at the beginning you get your sources and channels wrong or you're forgetting a big one, um, like, that mistake is going to carry through all the way. So uh, those are my two bits of advice. Uh, do you have any advice on how at the end, um, how someone could validate their answer and see if it's a, if it's just about right or if it's over or under what it should be? Yeah. Um, so kind of going back to the first bit, it's like, hey, I'm looking at this like from an orders of magnitude perspective. Like, do I think it's actually you know, six billion on the order of single digit billions. Do I think it's a hundred billion or something in between? I think um, in this case, I don't think it's as small as one billion because that would be the size of like, you know, a meat, like a Yahoo, for example. Um, but I, I don't think it, I don't think the overall paint market is as big as the Google. So that's sort of the way I was approaching it. Great, cool. Um, I think that's all we have for today. Thanks so much, Selena, for coming on today's show and covering this estimation question with us. And for the audience watching at home, good luck with your upcoming PM interview. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons below to let us know that this video is valuable for you. And of course, check out hundreds more videos just like this at tryexponent.com. Thanks for watching and good luck on your upcoming interview.